In this video, we'll take a look at a piece of vintage Heathkit test equipment, the FM01 FM test oscillator. I'll discuss the history and features of the instrument, and we'll look at the front panel controls and inside circuitry. I'll discuss the restoration of this particular unit and say something about the circuit design it used. We'll see a demonstration of the oscillator in operation and then wrap things up with a summary. Heathkit was a manufacturer of electronics in kit form. Their product line included amateur radio, test equipment, and various consumer products. By building a piece of electronics, you could save money and gain the satisfaction of having assembled it yourself. A signal generator is a device that produces repetitive signals which are useful for testing various types of electronic devices. They're often classified as audio signal generators which produce output over the audible range of frequencies and radio frequency or RF signal generators which generate signals at radio frequencies. Sweep and alignment generators produce signals that sweep or change frequency at a specific rate and are useful for testing and adjustment of devices that use frequency modulation such as FM radio and television receivers and for adjusting tune circuits that need to have a particular response over a range of frequencies. The output is often displayed using an oscilloscope. A marker generator can produce signals that have visible marks at specific frequencies that can be observed on an oscilloscope. FM radios almost universally use a 10.7 MHz intermediate frequency or IF. Alignment of FM receivers requires that the tune circuits be adjusted for proper response using a sweep generator and oscilloscope. The radio's FM demodulator, typically either a ratio detector or discriminator, can be adjusted using an amplitude modulated signal. Alignment of the RF stages requires some test signals within the FM broadcast band. Testing and diagnosing of audio stages can also benefit from an audio signal. The FM01 attempted to provide all of these features in one unit. It was offered from 1960 to 1967 in kit form only. The price was around 35 to 45 US dollars. The FM01 was designed to provide a signal source for alignment and troubleshooting of FM radio receivers. For RF alignment purposes, it can output signals at 90 MHz, 100 MHz, and 107 MHz which correspond to the low, middle, and high end of the FM broadcast band. You can optionally modulate these with a 400 Hz audio tone. It can also produce 400 Hz and 100 kHz signals for audio circuit testing and troubleshooting. For IF and detector alignment, it can output 10.7 MHz sweep signal, which was the standard IF frequency for FM receivers, with optional 10 or 10.7 MHz markers, 100 kHz submarkers and 400 cycle amplitude modulation. Power is on the sweep width control. The neon pilot lamp lights immediately because it uses a solid state rectifier. The tubes take a few seconds to warm up for proper operation. The large knob at the top selects the RF output, if any, and can be set to off the 10.7 MHz IF sweep generator output, a 90 MHz signal corresponding to the low end of the FM broadcast band, a 100 MHz signal for testing the middle of the FM band, and 107 MHz near the top of the FM band. Note that the unit is labeled with MC for megacycles per second, as this predated the common usage of the Hertz, as in megahertz, as the unit of frequency. The modulation knob selects between off 400 Hz modulation of the RF output, 400 Hz audio output, 100 kHz modulation of the RF output, and 100 kHz audio output. The red inner knob controls the output level of the signal or level of modulation. The marker oscillator knob selects an additional marker generator signal and can be one of marker off, a 10 MHz marker or a 10.7 MHz marker. The red inner knob controls the level of the marker generator signal. The sweep width control adjusts the width of the 10.7 MHz sweep signal. The sweep frequency is always 60 Hz, but the width can vary from about 200 kHz to 1 MHz. 
the output control adjusts the level of the combined signal at the output jack. It only moves about half a turn as it's a special limited rotation control that minimizes the capacitance between its input and output terminals so as to minimize RF leakage through the control. The RF-AF switch has a somewhat misleading label. It adjusts the output impedance. In the RF position, it selects a 56 ohm output impedance, which provides a low level, low impedance signal suitable for RF testing. In the AF position, the output impedance is high, and the generator produces a higher output level suitable for testing audio circuits. The output appears on this microphone style connector here. The unit uses all point-to-point -point wiring between switches, tube sockets, and terminal strips. It uses two tubes, both of which are 6U8 triode pentodes. The power supply uses a selenium rectifier. These were notorious for failing and producing an extremely bad smell. By the late 1960s, these were generally replaced in new designs by solid-state silicon diodes. The power transformer is on the bottom. Another inductor is used for the 400 Hz oscillator. The 10 MHz and 10.7 MHz marker oscillators use crystals. The other RF signals use variable inductors, which are adjusted during calibration. The 100 kHz oscillator is also adjustable. The 400 Hz one is not, as the frequency is not critical. The unit is reasonably hard to work on once assembled because it's small, cramped, and some components are inside and not easily accessible. Signals at over 100 MHz were pushing the limits of the technology at the time. The construction manual says, extremely careful construction techniques must be used if the instrument is to work properly. As with any piece of high frequency equipment, Lead length and parts placement are quite critical. Very close adherence to this construction manual is of utmost necessity if proper results are to be realized. This unit was reasonably well assembled. The manual gives a very good and detailed circuit description as well as procedures for using it to test and align FM radio receivers. I'll just mention a few highlights of the design. The sweep generator uses one of the triode tube elements in a Hartley oscillator circuit. The variable frequency sweep is achieved by making use of the variable capacitance of a semiconductor diode with changing voltage. The sweep frequency is 60 Hz derived from the line voltage. This method avoids some of the drawbacks of other schemes that used a mechanical method of varying the sweep or the use of an expensive voltage variable inductor. The high frequency oscillator is a coal pit circuit using one of the triodes utilizing one of three coils depending on the frequency selected. It can be both frequency and amplitude modulated by the 400 Hz audio. The marker oscillator uses one of the pentodes in a Pierce crystal oscillator circuit. These mix with the sweep signal so they appear as marker pips on an oscilloscope. The audio oscillator is a Hartley circuit that operates at 400 Hz or 100 kHz. The 100 kHz signal is quite distorted from a pure sine wave. This is desired in order to produce harmonics. The output circuit is a cathode follower which isolates the oscillators from the load and supports both low and high output impedance depending on the setting of the RF-AF switch. The power supply uses a power transformer and a simple half-wave rectifier circuit using a selenium rectifier and pi filter circuit. The neon pilot lamp operates on the B-plus voltage rather than the line voltage, which is somewhat unusual. There's a filter circuit on the power line input to minimize generator output leaking to the power line. Calibration of the unit requires an oscilloscope and FM radio, but no accurate frequency measuring device as it uses the harmonics of the crystal oscillators to adjust the variable oscillators. I purchased this unit in February of 2015 on eBay. It came well packed and included an original manual as well as two spare new old stock tubes. It didn't come with the original test cable, but one is easily made as it's just a length of coax cable. The original one had a facility to attach different termination resistors.
When initially powered up, the unit seemed to be working, but the instrument can perform a number of functions that can take time to all check out. With the unit open and powered up, I noticed some arcing when it was bumped. One of the terminal strip lug connections between the AC line and filter inductors and capacitors had never been soldered. The unit likely would have worked, but might have been intermittent sometimes. This is a reasonably common construction error that was probably made about 55 years ago when it was first assembled. Further testing indicated that all functions were working and the alignment was close. It looked like no mods or other changes were made to the unit over the years. As was common at the time, it uses an old-style microphone connector for the output. Many people replace these with a more modern BNC connector, which has better performance and fits modern test leads. If I was to use a unit on a regular basis, I would want to replace the selenium rectifier with a modern silicon one and a suitable dropping resistor, as the old one is likely to fail before long. I would also replace the paper capacitors with new ones, as they may have become electrically leaky. Because I don't intend to use the instrument for a lot of regular lab use, I decided to leave it original. Let's start by looking at the 400 Hz and 100 kHz audio outputs. These are selected by the modulation control. First 400 Hz. And adjusted by the modulation level and output level. You generally want the RF AF switch in the AF position to get a high enough output level for audio testing. Now the 100 kilohertz output. The 100 kilohertz output is not very close to a sine wave, which is intended for the reasons discussed before. Now let's look at the 10.7 megahertz sweep output. As you can see, it's intermittent. This is the blanking feature you need to get a correct sweep display in oscilloscope. To do sweep testing, you apply the signal to the IF amplifier of a receiver under test and monitor it with an oscilloscope set to 60 Hz line sweep. As the signal sweeps around 10.7 MHz, the oscilloscope shows a representation of the frequency response of the receiver's tune circuits. If the marker signals are turned on, they appear as pips on the display that mark 10.0 or 10.7 MHz. The 100 kHz submarker will show pips every 100 kHz. The sweep width controls the frequency width of the sweep, but you can't really see the effect here because it needs to pass through a tune circuit. The RF signals at 90, 100, and 107 MHz are too high in frequency for my 30 MHz oscilloscope to display. We can instead hear the signal on an FM radio. The plane carrier causes quieting of the receiver. Turning on the 400 Hz modulation produces an audible tone. The FM01 was somewhat unique, being the only unit of the FMO series of instruments. It attempted to provide all the functions that were needed to align FM radio receivers of the early 1960s. At under $50, it offered a good value. One drawback was that it was not suitable for testing other equipment like AM or shortwave radios. It was on the market for seven years, but seems to be relatively rare, as I don't see many of them appear on sources like eBay. It essentially became obsolete when FM stereo became more common, and stereo receivers required more features to be tested and aligned. These features were addressed by later Heathkit instruments like the IG37, IG112, and IG5237. You can learn more about signal generators and other test equipment in my book Classic Heathkit Electronic Test Equipment. The book covers Heathkit's test equipment products starting with a brief history of Heathkit, an overview of the test equipment product lines, and tips on buying and restoring vintage test equipment from sources like eBay.
Separate chapters cover the major categories of component testers and substitution boxes, frequency counters, meters, oscilloscopes, power supplies, signal generators, tube testers and checkers, and miscellaneous test equipment. Each chapter includes one or more in-depth sections that look at a representative model from my Heathkit collection, covering its features, operation, and notable quirks or trivia. The book is available from lulu.com and Amazon and retails for US $19.95. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please check out my other YouTube videos on vintage radio and test equipment.